Air pollution causes the premature deaths of an estimated 7 million people each year, and it makes life worse for all of us. People with asthma can experience chest tightness, coughing or wheezing, and difficulty breathing when triggered by air pollution. To understand the extent of the problem and how to solve it, we need to know how the pollution emitted by a car, a truck, or a factory spreads through the air. And that's where mathematics comes in. Welcome to another mathematical moment from the American Mathematical Society. I'm Scott Hirschberger. Today, I'm talking with Dr. Karen Rios Soto, a professor of applied mathematics and bioengineering at the University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez. Today, she's going to tell us about her research on air pollution and its link with asthma. So, Dr. Rio Soto, welcome. I'm glad to be talking with you. I'm glad to be talking with you as well, Scott. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So, to get started, can you tell us a little bit about how you originally got interested in looking at pollution and asthma from a mathematical point of view? Michelle, who is my former PhD student and co-author of this work, um, was a student in the Department of Mathematics at University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez, UPRM. Um, she decided to start doing um, the PhD at the Bioengineering Program, which is a graduate program at our institution. And she talked to me, asking me if I wanted to be her advisor. So um, when that happened, I initially thought about this problem. So I discussed it with Michelle. Michelle um, was eager to work on this and that's how everything started. When you started looking at this problem, how did you approach thinking about it mathematically? Because it seems like something could be very difficult to kind of wrap your mind around, like how you would model air pollution mathematically. So it was challenging in the sense that, of course, we wanted to model um, how the um, pollutants, particulate matter, but in, in fact, from motor vehicle emissions, which is ultrafine particles, can exacerbate and trigger asthma symptoms. And for that reason, we not only had to incorporate human population, that is um, individuals prone to asthma, individuals that have episodes or exacerbated episodes, which are the ones that have to get hospitalizations according to their asthma symptoms. But also we have to incorporate equations and mathematics related to the pollutants. So in that sense, it was fairly okay to um, build the initial model, which was a model of partial differential equations because we wanted to model how um, not only the pollutants spread in a region, how they spread and grow, but also how they can affect the population that is also moving. And in that sense, we, when we created the partial differential equation model, which was of reaction diffusion type, we also had to analyze carefully the equation that's what was going to be related to the pollutant emission. And in that sense, that was, was a bit challenging. I'd like to talk a little bit more about the term um, ultrafine particles. Can you explain um, what those are, like what chemically they are, what, what they're like in the atmosphere? Of course. So there are different types of particulate matters. And particulate matters are measured according to micrometers. So for example, if a particulate matter is um, less than 10 micrometers, then that is considered just particulate matter. When it's less than 2.5 micrometers, it's what is called um, fine particle uh, matter. But when it's less than 0.1 micrometer, that is ultra fine particles. Now, um, the particulate matter coming from motor vehicle emissions are somehow regulated in the states. I'm talking about um, the Clean Air Act. And in that sense, the regulation is related to um, fine particles as well as particles in general, but not ultra fine particles. However, studies have found that the um, worst trigger of asthma related to uh, motor vehicle emissions are actually from ultra fine particles, which are not regulated. The reason why is this happening is because their size is very small they can um, actually enter the airways of the lungs fairly easily and stay there for a longer period of time. Can you also talk a little bit about the two parts of your model? You mentioned it's a reaction diffusion model. So what is the reaction part and what's the diffusion part? 
The reaction diffusion models come into play from chemistry initially, and they have been um, adapted to many problems in mathematics, when in modeling, particularly in the recent years for um, epidemic modeling. So our model approach is similar to what is called a susceptible infected susceptible model, which is a model that does, doesn't have immunity on it, and the people can be reinfected individuals. So in that sense, because people don't recover from asthma, they can actually um, you know, decrease their symptoms and um, you know, through medications or um, inhalers and things like that, um, they can decrease their symptoms, but asthma is prevalent on their body basically forever because there's no cure. So in that sense, we adapted the same SIS model, but not for asthma symptoms. And because we were relating it to ultrafine particles, which was the interest of our work, we have to come up with an equation that study the growth of the pollutant, but also its dispersal. And that's why we have a reaction diffusion equation. The reaction part is basically modeling the growth of the pollutant in the environment, and the diffusion part is measuring the spread of this pollutant. For the pollutant equation, we have to take into account many aspects that we are related to motor vehicle emissions, um, but also the fact that there might be some background concentrations of pollutants due to the industry and then other, other sources as well. We also have um, some nucleation terms which are related to the production of pollutants naturally on the environment, um, for example, from fires, which are uh, natural sources. And then we also have a term that incorporates the loss of pollutants in the environment, typically through wind or rain, for example. However, we have to incorporate many aspects of the motor vehicle's emission, such as um, gasoline, burning rate, travel time, um, also whether the vehicle um, is on a rural area versus an urban area, traffic, so we incorporate the, all these aspects on this equation, and they are very well explained on the, um, on the paper. And in that sense, we came up with this a particular equation for the um, spread of pollutants in the environment. Wow, I can see why it was so complicated. There's a lot to take into consideration there. There's a lot to take into consideration, but once um, the model is built, I think it's um, pretty easy to understand. Um, however, as I said, there are many factors that are incorporated through parameter values, and those parameters are really important to, um, you know, to be understandable in order to complete the work. And those parameters would be based on real-world measurements? So in that sense, we found different studies that study different aspects of this particular equation and asthma in general in order to incorporate our parameter values although um, most of them we are taking on a range so we study different scenarios of these parameter values okay got it so once you'd created that model and we're looking at what happened in different scenarios what ended up being kind of the big picture conclusion that you found while doing this work um, when we analyzed this model, we found a very important threshold condition of our work, which we call R sub P. This R sub P is related to the R naught or R sub C that people know now, which is the basic reproductive number. This basic reproductive number has been um, you know, important to model epidemic dynamics for years. And in that, in that sense, we also got a similar threshold quantity for our work that basically says that if that threshold quantity is less than one, we won't have um, pollutants spreading in the population. However, if that condition is greater than one, then we will have pollutant spread. And what we found out is that in order to have an asthma-free population, according to the spread of motor um, vehicle emissions or ultrafine particles, is that the um, growth rate of the pollutants needs to be in a certain value or in a threshold in order for that to happen. So in that case, our recommendation once again is that there should be um, particular attention paid by the um, government, the Environmental Protection Agency, in order to also regulate these ultrafine particles. We could um, incorporate the um, filters on certain vehicles. Um, we divide also in the work 
um, low duty vehicles versus high duty because you know there's uh, vehicles that emit more pollutants than others and in that sense um, I think we should incorporate these filters on the vehicles in order to reduce these exacerbations of asthma symptoms on the asthmatic population. So um, since the publication of this paper have you done any further research in this area um, and if not like what do you think are the, the future directions of research that need to happen? So yes I, I would like actually to continue doing um, a, this type of work um, I would like to um, incorporate some control of my, my model. As I said, the only mechanism of control that we incorporated was the treatment of the individuals that have asthma. So that means once they have an asthma episode, asthma symptom, getting inhaders or medication, uh, in the case of exacerbated asthma, that means that people go to hospital, so they are a few days in the hospital taking care of their conditions. And so the only um, source of control we have right now is particularly through the medications. However, I would like to incorporate in my model some more control in the aspects of the motor vehicle emission. Seeing how incorporating, for example, these filters will actually help decrease the amount of asthma symptoms and episodes we get in the population. Yeah, so it sounds like there's a lot of future research that can and should be done on this um, because it's, it's an issue that affects millions of people around the world. Um, so thank you for telling me about it. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Yes, I, I would like to say that I want to congratulate Michelle for doing all this work. And also I feel that I want to encourage also undergraduates to work on this. There were certain aspects of this research that could have been really nice for an undergraduate to work at. And I feel that there's a lot that can be done and doesn't necessarily have to be at the upper level. So I encourage everyone to um, consider working on this type of problems. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Rio Soto, for talking with me. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Mm -hmm.